Hey guys, this is Techo Freak here, and welcome to episode 21 of my Let's CS custom story creation tutorial for Amnesia. And today we're going to be talking about uh, force, uh, applying force to objects such as this plant over here, uh, and applying force to uh, the player, uh, which I want to do over here in this uh, place where we create the timer, and uh, we want the play a player to receive force and get pushed down the hole. And we want this plant over here to fly off the piano and uh, pretty much smash into the opposite side over here. So uh, that's that's pretty much what I want to do. I want to use force and show you guys how you can use force. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's get started. Um, uh, so uh, let's start by uh, uh, making a little script area here. So I want to make a script area around this plant. So when the player gets near uh, near the plant and steps in the area, the plant will fly off the uh, piano. So that's what we want to do. So let's get started with that and uh, start coding that. So let's go ahead and go like that and go like that. So that should get the player when he steps nearby. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, so now uh, let's go ahead and click on it and give it another name. Um, I'm not maybe uh, force area, force area one. That, that'd be an okay name. I'm not really sure what to name it, but that that seems like an okay name. All right. So when the player steps in that area, we want stuff to happen. So let's go ahead and uh, go over and uh, code code that real quick. Uh, so we want uh, add entity collide callback. Let's go ahead and copy this one that we have from uh, from the uh, from the uh, change map. And uh, we want the player to collide when the player collides with this area right here called force area one. Let's put that in force oh, force area one. Uh, uh, we want when uh, the player collides with force area one uh, for this function to be run. Uh, and and uh, we want to change the function name. We want to change the function to something like um, I don't know, plant force, plant force one or something like that. And now let's go down and copy. We just copy this one because it has the same parameters, and this is the create timer. Uh, so let's go ahead and go down and paste it down here. Uh, create a little brackets, and we're good. Uh, let's rename this to match with uh, our plant force one. So plant force one. All right. So now we uh, we have the matching names. Now we can run anything we want in here. So let's uh, go ahead and go over to our episode one that HPS file. Uh, you can find this in. Uh, you can download my custom story and you can find this in maps templates and 21 the link uh, episode 21 the link will be in the description you can also view this um, view the episode 21 the HPS file online the link should be in the description and it should be this one right here so you guys can just follow that and you guys can view it online without having to download my custom stories so uh, that's how you can uh, view this file so uh, now uh, yeah there's two uh, lines of code here one's for the uh, for the player force and one's for the uh, for the uh, for the props, which is the plant or objects like that. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this one. And I'll explain to you guys how to use it. So uh, let's go ahead and put in our little plant force uh, one script. Uh, okay. So now uh, now let's talk about the uh, parameters. So uh, first parameter uh, is the name of the prop that you want to move. So if we go back to our map, uh, we want to move this plant. So it's uh, pop plant small zero one. Maybe I'll give it a simpler name. Uh, we'll do plant one. Hit enter and control S to save that. Uh, plant one is a lot simpler for uh, for for coding with simple name. So let's go ahead and name it plant one here. Uh, I'm gonna skip these for the moment. I'll come back to these right after we talk about this last parameter. So this last parameter determines what grid system you want to use uh, for this for this so uh, these three these three uh, parameters here are uh, are pretty much at the axis it's the X Y and Z it uh, it's, it should always be X Y and Z when you see three parameters like this like this right at one after another it's usually uh, it's usually uh, the the three axis that you have on the uh, level editor you guys can see 
And there's the, the blue, the green, and the red. So, um, so, so, uh, yeah, you can uh, apply force in those directions. And this is just asking if, um, if you want to use the world coordinate system or a different coordinate system. We do indeed want to use this, uh, the world coordinate system here. So we're going to use this very same coordinate system right here. Uh, so uh, in that case, just leave it as is and just leave it as world. So now let's talk about how we determine these variables right here. So um, the easy way to determine them is to use the level letter because uh, uh, you need uh, we need to know what direction uh, the plant is going to fly, and we apply force in the direction that we want that plant to fly, but we don't know what direction is which yet. So uh, I'm going to show you the uh, the the uh, the quick way to determine this, and then the way that you can do it to be for sure. Uh, so if you guys like uh, look at the if, like zoom out the map, you can see the whole grid. There's a red line, there's a blue line, and there's a green line. So the the red line is the x-axis, and the blue line is the uh, z-axis, and then the uh, green line is the y-axis. So uh, that's the, the, that. Those are the axes. Uh, as you can see, we want the plant to fly in the uh, along the uh, the uh, z-axis, the blue line. Because we want it to go from here to here. So uh, now you also need to know whether it's in the positive direction or the negative direction. So because uh, you can't be too sure what direction that is. Because if you look at it from both sides, it could be either or. So uh, this is pretty simple to determine. Th this is still the quick way to determine it. So you click on a plant, you see the arrows that are ar already facing. Whatever direction they're facing, that is the positive side. So if the, you see the... the uh, the X is pointing uh, in this direction. That means it's going along the uh, po it's pointing towards the positive side of the X axis. If we zoom out, you can see the uh, red line, and you can see the uh, red arrow pointing in that direction. That makes that direction the uh, positive direction, and making this side the uh, positive direction for the Z axis, and then that the positive direction for the Y axis. So, seeing how this is the positive for the Z, we want to go the other way, which is negative. So we want to go towards a negative z-axis. So and that could be confusing. You guys will probably get the hang of uh, determining that pretty quickly. But I'm going to show you the easier way to do it if you're uh, just starting off. If you didn't get that explanation, don't worry about it. Uh, there is a quicker way to determine this. So if you have the plant selected, you can see position x, y, z, uh, x, y, and z. And uh, to just determine what direction we're going, let's just go ahead and move our plant in the direction we want it to fly. So we want it to go in that direction over here towards the bed. Let's go ahead and grab it and start moving in that direction. And pay attention to which number changes there. So as you can see, the z-axis is decreasing and is going down into the negative. So that is a giveaway that we're going in the negative z-axis. So... Uh, so that 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 that's a pretty easy way to tell, uh, but it's also pretty quick. Just to uh, just click on here and see what direction is which. So uh, pretty simple. Uh, in either ways, a little bit it'll, you gotta get a bit more custom before you make mistakes using this one. But it's a good way to uh, determine both of them. So yeah, so we're going in the negative uh, side of the z-axis. So um, that's a quick. Uh, the, so now let's go over to our. Uh, uh, room 01 net HPS and now let's apply let, let's apply that to these numbers here so we want we don't want no movement on the x-axis we want no movement on the y-axis we do want movement on the z-axis and we want um, it to go towards a negative sign so now uh, now we have to determine a number because uh, at this point you have no clue what number it is the engine scripts website actually tells you uh, some good, a good range to use and the range is right here. Uh, it's um, 100 for weak to 10,000 for strong force. That's the range they give you in the uh, Engine Scripts website. So uh, you can use in, uh, anywhere from this range. I recommend starting dead center at like 5,000 and then tweaking it from there. So I'm going to use 5,000 so you guys can see how much 5,000 is. So I'm going to go ahead and apply 5,000 force in the po a positive Z direction. But, of course, we don't want positive Z. We want negative Z. So let's go ahead and put a negative right on front of the 5,000. And now this plant will go towards the negative side of the Z axis. So it will go 
opposite from the uh it'll go it'll go opposite from this uh from this one because this is the positive and go in that direction with a force of five thousand <clears throat> excuse me so uh yeah so that's what will happen there and uh that's uh pretty much uh said and done at this point uh that's how you uh do the the prop force i believe you can only do it with uh movable objects i've never actually tried it on objects that stay still kind of like a piano and stuff like that i doubt they work though i imagine that they'll just stay in place <clears throat> so yeah uh now let's get started with coding the uh the play the player getting pushed. So this is actually fairly easy after explaining the first one. So we already have our little script area that we want to use. So uh that one is the create uh that's the uh player interacting with the uh create timer area and and uh then the function uh create timer will run and create timer down here. Uh, we'll do all this stuff, but we also want to add a new one under it, which will add force to the player. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, copy the add player body force right here and bring it over to our room01.hps file and paste it right there. So uh, so now, uh, as you can, you can see, already tell by these first three ones what it is. It's going to be X, Y, and Z, just like the uh, last one. Uh, and uh let's talk about this last part right here this last part right here uh determines what it, it's similar to the one over here uh right here with the world this says this is basically asking do you want to use the player's coordinate system uh the player's grid so whatever i believe it's whatever direction they're facing is the positive z axis and uh that that's that is the question do you want to use the player's grid and you put true if you do want to use it in this case we do not want to use it so it's set to false we want to use the world grid the level editors grid so in that case uh we're going to say um false because we don't want to use the player's uh grid uh okay so now uh there's uh the other three variables so uh let's go ahead and determine what direction we want to go just by having it clicked you can see the uh the positive x axis is pointing in the direction we want to go so that's a pretty much a, uh, a dead giveaway right there uh we are going in the positive x uh axis but just to be sure uh let's go ahead and uh go to area or uh yeah yeah general and there's X, Y, and Z, so let's move it in this direction. We should see the X start increasing. Yep, the X is increasing as we're pushing in the direction we want the player to fly. So uh, there we go, we moved it back. And now let's go ahead and uh, and code that. So remember, it's X, Y, and Z, uh, just like it is in the alphabet. So X is going to be the first one here. And uh, now we got a, uh, a quick talk about the force. You would think it'd be something similar to the prop force, like uh, between 100 to 10,000. It is actually not. The Engine Scripts website says you need a minimum of 2,000 to even notice any effect. With even 10,000, you barely notice an effect of the player being pushed. So I recommend using a higher number and going down from there. Uh, that is my recommendation to you guys. So I, re I recommend it here in the... Um, and the episode 21 that HPS, they use uh, a number of 50,000 and you tweak it from there. So let's go ahead and use the same thing. It should be a pretty strong push. Uh, and yeah, so let's go ahead and put 50, 1, 2, 3, 50,000. And uh, yeah, make sure you check your zeros because uh, there are no commas here. So you could put more zeros than it seemed, than, than you think you did. So make sure you count them. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is to adding body force. Pretty simple once you get the range down, and uh, pretty simple when you get to uh, figure out how to move uh, according to the grid, like what direction the player is going to move. So let's go ahead and save this up, and uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and load up my custom story, and I'll test out the stuff that we just did. I'll see you guys there. Alright guys, here we are in our custom story once again, and uh, so first thing we're going to do is go and step in this little uh, space here where the plant flies off, so let's go ahead and do that. There it goes, plant flies off, it seems to have landed like maybe uh, mid-bed here, so it didn't exactly smash against the wall, but that, that, that's a nice throw. Uh, that's 5,000 for you guys, so 
you guys are gonna use it you guys can tweak it from there that was 5,000 half would probably land here another half maybe like a thousand two hundred and fifty will land like right here thousand will probably be right here so just whatever you guys want pretty much but hopefully that's a good demonstration of what 5,000 can do so yeah so let's go ahead and progress a little bit more so we can get to our little uh, uh, body force area where we're gonna fly a bit so let's go ahead and open the door grab this key we'll go ahead and uh, we're just standing here and wait for him to disappear so we're here Open it. So now uh, let's go ahead and use a lantern. So remember, uh, when we step in this area here, we should get launched down the hall. Uh, it should be a pretty strong push. Not exactly sure how strong. So let's find out. About halfway down the hall. It's not bad. The music stops and everything. Yeah. So uh, five uh, fifty thousand is about this distance to this door right here. So that's 50,000. So if you guys want to tweak that, remember, just just think by cutting in half. If you cut this in half, you get uh, 25,000 will push you right here. Another half would pu would push you like right here. So yeah, I mean, uh, as you can see, if that that's how far it pushed me. And if you just keep cutting in half, you think how how much 2,000 would have done or anything less. So so yeah, uh, that's pretty much uh, all there is to this episode, guys. Uh, thank you guys uh, for watching. Uh, this video will come uh, two weeks after the last video. I was having trouble last week with the recordings and I uh, couldn't quite get it to you guys last week. Uh, I'm also going to be going on vacation pretty soon and um, I won't be able to upload long that time. I will definitely try my best to record a couple of videos uh, before I leave so that way I can uh, I won't I probably won't have internet access uh, where I'm going so I will probably just upload all of them before maybe uh, two episodes uh, to two episodes record ahead but no th these videos do take some time to um, to uh, work on especially with uh, the fact that I have to write the uh, the episode that HPS files beforehand so I need to uh, you know type all of that up I do all that typing myself I don't get it from anywhere else I do it for uh, before the video that usually takes uh, anywhere from half an hour to an hour and then the recording takes another while so uh, there, there there's my process for how I do this stuff and it's not uh, exactly the easiest thing which is why I'm trying to do it once a week but I did have problems with my uh, with some things uh, last week, so um, yeah. So I'm gonna try and uh, get those to you guys before I go away, and hopefully uh, you find this episode to be useful. And uh, up upcoming things are um, for sure. Upcoming things are gonna be flashbacks. Uh, next episode's probably gonna be something on jump scares. Uh, ways to use jump scares. I think I'm gonna do like a mini series within my series uh, for jump scares. Like uh, next episode, we'll do uh, part one to jump scares, and uh, then the following episode, we'll do like flashbacks or something like that, or things that we have to build up to do flashbacks. Then later on, another video on jump scares, and then another video, and then like some more videos, and that's that, that's what I'm thinking right now. I don't want to just do straight episodes of just, just jump scares. Uh, I don't I don't know if uh, many people will enjoy that because I'm not really teaching you guys uh, anything new. I'm just teaching you how to use previous things that I've already taught you, and use them in a certain way or use them in different ways. So. Uh, yeah, so, uh, next episode's got definitely gonna be part one to jump scares. After that, I'm not 100% sure, but we will see what comes in the future, guys. Alright, guys, thanks for watching. Leave a comment on what you want to see in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.